Hi, my name is Braden and I'm a product manager at FarmTrax. Today we're going to be looking at a new optical sensor system which we're introducing and going away from the old barrel style sensors to a much smaller right angle, lower profile sensor that will make installing on elevators where you have very little space a lot easier. We've also come up with a system for mounting these that's much simpler than the old bracket style with the rivets. So overall you'll save a lot of time on installs and be able to fit into much tighter spaces. So. We'll get started and we're going to run through some installs here. The sensors come pre-assembled in their uh, sensor mounts which will then clip into the mounting plate like that and that's all there is to it. We'll run through how this goes on an actual elevator here now with the drilling technique and uh, you'll see how this goes all together. For marking out the drilling location for the sensors we are using the insulation template and going 77 inches up from the bearing. So we measured the paddles on this uh, combine and decided to go with two and a half inches so that we were lined up with the center of the paddle for our drilling location. Once you've got your drilling location marked out, make a mark with your center punch. The drills and drill extensions are included in your farm tracks kit. Use the uh, included 1 8 inch bit to drill your pilot hole. Next step is to use the included step drill bit and drill through at the pilot hole location. Uh, go all the way through. You'll notice that the largest step is 18 millimeters, which is the correct size of the sensor. Once you've drilled uh, two or three of the steps on your drill, uh, stop and just take a look and make sure that there are no paddles in the way. And if so, uh, move those. Using the alcohol swabs provided, prepare the area around the sensor hole just to make sure that it's uh, clean and the adhesive will stick properly really important to make sure this is done with the alcohol swab because the surface needs to be fully sterilized for the adhesive to bond properly. You may find on some older combines uh, that the paint may have oxidized. Uh, it's good to clean this thoroughly before you go to the alcohol swab step. Before mounting the plate on, decide which way you want to route your wiring. You'll see that the wire leaves opposite each of these clips. So if you want your wiring to go this way around the elevator, set it up so that one of your clips is facing opposite that direction. Next step is to take the mounting plate and remove the adhesive backing. Once the adhesive backing is removed, take the drilling jig, place it into the mounting plate and twist it into place. Once you've got this in place, Line it up with the hole using the alignment piece and press it onto the side of the elevator. Use pressure here. Uh, the adhesive is activated under pressure. We suggest putting pressure for at least 15 seconds to make sure you get a good bond. After you've finished applying pressure to the mounting plate, leave it alone for a few minutes so that it can uh, form a proper bond. After a few minutes, come back and you can unclip this mounting jig and pull it out. Uh, then you've got your mounting plate ready to go, ready for the sensor. But first, we're going to drill the hole in the back side from here. Uh, included in the kit is an extension for your drill so that we can go and drill the back side of the elevator from here so we don't need to drill blindly. Uh, using that same drilling jig we used to align the first mounting plate, place it on the extension, slide it up, and then mount the extension on your drill. Once you're ready and in place, we're going to Mount this drilling alignment jig back in the mounting plate. Put the drilling alignment piece back into the mount and lock it into place. You should have now a nice straight shot to the back of the elevator wall and we'll drill the pilot hole. Once you finish drilling the pilot hole on the back side of the elevator, unclip the drilling jig and remove the assembly. Next, we're gonna swap out the pilot drill bit for the step drill bit and drill the hole on the back side of the elevator. And it's important for this step to make sure that the tip of the step drill bit lines up with the hole you've drilled for your pilot hole. So take some time and make sure you've got it in place properly. The guide will make it so you're pretty much bang on, but just make sure before you start drilling. Once you've got the uh, tip of the step drill bit engaged in your pilot hole, start to drill. Once you get two steps in, it's uh, best to be safe while the bond is still curing to unclip the drilling jig and slide it out so that you're not applying any unnecessary torque to your mounting plate. Once you finish drilling clean through the other side, remove the drill. Using another alcohol swab, I'm gonna prepare the area at the back side of the elevator for the next mounting plate. Remove the adhesive backing from your second mounting plate. Use the same drilling and mounting jig we've used before. Clip it into place and you'll be able to align the plate with the hole on the back side of the elevator and press on. 
Apply pressure for 15 seconds to make sure it's firmly mounted on. Once you've left it alone for a little while, come back and you can remove the drilling guide by twisting counterclockwise. When you're going to mount your sensors, make sure you choose the receiver sensor for the outside of the elevator. You'll be able to tell it's the receiver because it has that second LED and it has three wires on the connector. To clip it into place, compress this tab at the top and twist into place. Uh, you'll know it's in when you feel a click. To mount the receiver sensor, you may need to peek around the back of the elevator to make sure the tabs are lined up with the mounting plate. Once you've done so, press the sensor in towards the mounting plate and twist clockwise. You'll feel it snap into place. Uh, it's important to make sure you've thought of a good spot to run your wiring so that it's not going to be uh, caught up on any moving belts. Uh, taking the interconnect harness, connect the receiver sensor and emitter. And we're going to find a nice tidy spot to run this. On this S770, we're going to run the wiring to match this harness here and stay away from these moving belts. Uh, we've got this pigtail here on the interconnect harness that's for the moisture sensor. So we're going to tuck it down the back and down to the bottom of the elevator. With the interconnect harness here, when you bring it down to the bottom of the elevator, you'll be able to just plug in simply the wiring harness that comes off the moisture sensor, which you can see we've now mounted in the door here. Make sure to take up any extra slack in the harness so you don't have it uh, laying around, potentially getting caught on things. The FarmTrax moisture sensor extends our yield monitoring system to provide grain moisture and calculate dry and wet yield. Precision moisture maps are created through the FarmTrax web app. If you've purchased the moisture sensor, here are the steps required for install. The moisture sensor will be installed in the lower door of the clean grain elevator. It should be installed slightly off from the center line of the lower door, approximately between the 6.30 to 7 o'clock position. This is the optimal placement for corn and cereals. If harvesting oil seeds, it is advised to install closer to the middle of the paddle. The sensor should be installed somewhere it is less susceptible to wear from flowing grain. Avoid areas with obvious wear patterns. The sensor should be oriented so that the wiring harness faces towards the back of the combine. Remove the lower door for easier handling. Clean the door surface and place the moisture sensor cutter template on the selected location. If using a plasma cutter, place and clamp a FarmTrack stainless steel template onto the desired location. Use a center punch to mark the crosshairs of the four bolt holes and the two hole saw drilling locations. Drill out the hole saw circles. Use an angle grinder cutoff wheel blade to cut an opening for the moisture sensor to occupy. If using a plasma cutter, use the stainless steel plasma cutter template and cut freehand. Place the moisture sensor into the cut space and align the holes on the top and bottom of the sensor with the four bolt holes. Place four number 10 bolts through the cut holes and use the provided washers and nuts to secure the sensor into place. Do not over tighten the bolts as this can cause the sensor mounts to crack. Thanks for tuning in today to uh, see how we install our new optical sensor system on this John Deere S770. Uh, tune in to our other videos and look out for tutorials on how uh, all our other products work and uh, we'll see you soon.